What was the first contest you entered? A skateboard contest? Mm -hmm. The day I got on my board and I stood on it and someone said, how many 360s can you do? I've always enjoyed the challenge of a contest. It's like a free vacation for two minutes of my life. A lot of times my whole approach to competition was have fun. That's the only time we were together. People didn't see each other unless it was a competition. It was just about gathering together for skateboarding and to have fun. My first contest I entered was a shop contest. It was a skate shop called Harsh Reality. It was a harsh reality, I was nervous. The first contest I ever entered was a castle contest. It's like the little league for skateboarding. That first castle season, I didn't do very well. 99 though, I really came to a form. I got some trophies upstairs. The first contest I ever entered, I must have been Fort Myers, Florida, probably 1980. Seven? Yeah, it was important to be there because of all the people that were better than you, right? Yeah, I mean, I met Andrew Reynolds there when he was like a little kid. We were both little kids. That's where I met Brian Herman. We would skate together in Castle. That's where I met Sheckler. Oh, Dylan. I met Dylan Reeder in Castle. He used to skate Castle with me. Yeah, it's important for camaraderie and trying to level up, but really to show off, you know, and hope somebody saw you shredding. I did know, like, yeah, going there, like, to get on radar or maybe get sponsored or whatever. I just wanted to, like, get my name out there. I mean, that's how I met so many people I still know today. In the beginning, to be sponsored, you must win a contest. This is how competition used to be, and we should still make it this way. We used to have to wear bibs. The pros got cloth bibs, and we got um, vinyl. When I got sponsored, skateboarding collapsed. It was dead. How important contests were, were during the bust years of skateboarding is like, this is something that I really feel strongly about. Competition was designed by the industry to spread the stoke. Next up, from Whittier, California, for skating for Powell Corporation, Lance Mountain. It was so much more that than trying to find out who's number one so we can give them money. Skateboarding still wasn't looking for the number one. It was looking to make people fall in love with skateboarding. In 1998, when I went pro, it was not important to win contests. I think it was just a bonus. You know, when I started traveling for contests, people would always ask me, like, isn't that annoying? And I'm like, no, it's like a free vacation for two minutes of my life is all I have to dedicate to it, you know? Two, two one-minute runs, and I get to go to Vancouver for the weekend and party my face off with Eric Cawson or somebody, you know? It's like fun. And it was like, sick, we're going up here to hang out in Vancouver for a couple weeks, you know, there's gonna be this contest and we'll go, we'll all hang out, have fun, do that, skating it, whatever. The main focus was after the contest and staying there an extra week or two to film for your video part. The motivation was not to win. It was just about gathering together and to have fun. Do I remember who, who, who placed second in Munster in 1997? No. 2002, I turned pro. In that time, the skating contest was not a requirement. It wasn't something that was gonna like make your career go to the next level. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I just went because I wanted to win some money. So, you know, X Games, whoa, 50 grand for the prize? I'm trying to get that, you know? My very first pro contest that once I had a board, the prize was someone else's pro model board for first place. That was the highest level of professional. It was in Thrasher, it was covered. This was a professional contest. The first pro contest I won was at the Velodrome down in Dominguez Hills. That was one where like the prize purse actually really kind of got bumped up. It was 5,000 for first. I remember that being like what they were boasting about is like this huge prize purse. Funny enough, that was the first one I won. <laughs> one of them I, I had just had my son and I was like, man, I, I, I want to fly up. I don't want to drive. Can you fly me up? No money to fly you up. So. My wife and I flew up. It was 350 bucks to fly there and back, and I won the contest, and it was, it was Tahoe. I won Tahoe, $300 for Tahoe, but it cost me 350 to get there. So that contest cost me 50 bucks. <laughs> well, back in the early 90s, there was no women's division in skating, so I would just enter in the normal contest, and that was cool. And then 
in like the early 2000s, they started having like a women's division. They usually had the women's contest at like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. It was never at like three or four in the afternoon. It sucked. There'd be like eight people in the audience, you know what I mean? And then there was a time when, I forget where it was, but they were like, you can't enter both contests. You can only enter the women's division. And I was devastated, I was heartbroken. I mean, I enjoyed both, you know what I mean? When they introduced the women's division, I did good, yeah. I would usually win, but the prize was like $2,000 or something, you know what I mean? Oh, there was heavy pay inequality for sure. And I'm pretty sure there still is. Not much longer past the grassroots type of contest, there became the big televised mixed genres of extreme sports and live television and television sponsors boosting up the, the prize purse. As they kept doing them, they kept bumping up that prize money. You know, winning $1,000 at uh, like an all-girl skate jam to like, you know, winning $10,000 at the X Games to like, I think, in 2008, it was $25,000, and then it went up to like $40,000. You're getting viewership on TV, so you're getting more sponsors, and there was more money getting, you know, funneled into this machine. Once I became like a contest skater skater, when it really like started holding weight to me, would probably be after uh, my second X Games win, because I was back to back two years in a row. And then I remember thinking like, damn, like I want to keep this up, you know, I want to keep doing this. and. By that time, that was 2005, you know, it started to bring a little more attention. It definitely started, you know, got me on the radar of some of the bigger sponsors that I ended up getting. So I saw the value it started, you know, bringing career-wise. I never, like, just took the winnings and just went and splurged, you know. I just, I bought in some dumb things in my day. Um, but never just like, oh, take this check and directly splurge it on something, so thankfully. I uh, haven't been too dumb. Your dad teach you that? No, no, he did not. <laughs> Third Gravity Games, I took all the contest winnings and spent it on a yellow gold presidential Rolex with a diamond bezel. Which is funny, I probably stopped wearing this thing about 15 years ago. <laughs> with what's going on this summer in Tokyo, it's a huge platform. Back in the day, if we had this opportunity, we would have taken it in a second. Of course we would have gone. If this had happened when I was, I guess, um, doing well in competition, I would have for sure done it. My mom would have killed me if I didn't go. <laughs> Just because a big event like that is happening doesn't mean you can't still have the, you know, kids in Tempe, Arizona, looking through their Thrasher mag, want to get, you know, go out and film their clips and have their one filmer in the crew and go out and light up spots and do it. Why does that have to change? They don't have to stop doing that. If it can help in some way, it may be either directly or indirectly, can help keep skateboarding going. Um, that's, all I, that's all I want. I think skateboarders should be on the same level as NBA players, NFL, MLB players, it's just as difficult or more than any of these other sports. And the guys who are the best at it, I think deserve to have their shine. Don't threaten me with a Wheaties box opportunity. I'll take that in a heartbeat, man. It's got some Spitfires, Power Core Spitfires on it. Yeah, so, I mean, you can actually ride this thing. This is a trophy. Yeah, this is a trophy. And then you just, like, take that off. Then it's like a slide guitar. Probably out of tune.